So if you notice on some mornings that your car just feels fantastically lively, you're really enjoying the performance, and yet at other times, maybe on the afternoon, the car feels somewhat dull, although you do seem to get better fuel economy. So this video, we're just gonna look at what's going on to every car out there and explain why you get performance increase, maybe in the mornings and at other times, your car's performance is noticeably down on what it usually is. So we're going to look at two things that we can learn from this phenomena and how we can exploit that to make more power from the engine. So we're going to be looking at a formula, PV equals NRT. PV is the pressure volume, N is the moles of gas, R is the gas constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. So we won't go too technical. I've probably scared you when I started talking about chemical formulas and gas formulas and all the rest of it. But the basic principle is that as a gas warms up, it becomes less dense. It takes up more space. You probably noticed that when you blow up a balloon. If you seal off the air in the balloon and you change the temperature of that balloon, it will get bigger as the temperature increases and it will shrink as the temperature decreases. So something important is happening there that will affect the performance of your car's engine. Now your engine is breathing in air from all around us. So what is air made up of? Well, it's 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 0.9999% other gases, and 0.0001% farts. Although the percentage at the end there may vary depending on your personal location and what you've been eating recently. But the overall concentration of gases doesn't change. But as the volume of the gas takes up less space, you can get more of it in your engine. And more oxygen means you can burn more fuel. So that's exactly what is happening on a cold, frosty morning. The air is dense. You're getting a lot of oxygen in that air charge and the car is able to burn more fuel. So we're going to look at two things that we can learn from this phenomena and how we can exploit that to make more power from the engine. So firstly, you want the intake air to be as cold as possible. So it's harder to reduce the temperature below whatever the ambient temperature is. But the trick here is really to avoid adding excessive temperatures to that intake charge. So the most common mistake that I see people making is fitting an induction kit in an open cone filter inside the engine bay near the radiator and the exhaust where it's getting quite warm. So that intake charge can get quite warm carry less oxygen and you'll be down on power. So as well as the atmospheric differences in temperature, you can actually make some decisions when you're tuning your car that could dent the performance or the potential performance that you get from your project. So that's certainly one to watch out for. Now, the next thing we learned from this is on turbocharged engines, where you start compressing the air intake charge, you start adding a lot of heat to it. So heat increase is a byproduct of compressing air. You've probably noticed as you pump up your tires or you pump anything up, the pump starts getting warm where the air has been compressed. So intake temperatures on a turbocharged vehicle can be excessively high. So I'm just gonna flash out a few examples here. So we're taking a baseline 200 horsepower turbo car as an example. We're gonna assume, first of all, it's got no intercooler. So I don't think there's any idiot manufacturer out there that would not put an intercooler on a turbocharged car. But if the intake temperature is 95 Celsius or 203 Fahrenheit, your power will be down to about 176 horsepower. So that is a massive loss of 24 horsepower just through not having an intercooler. At 75 degrees Celsius or 167 degrees Fahrenheit, your power would be 181 horsepower, so 19 horsepower down on whatever the potential power could be. These high intake temperatures mean that your quarter mile time will typically clock in at around 16.47 seconds or 16.67 seconds in case of the engine power that's been reduced to 176. Then we start adding an intercooler to the engine. So the intercooler is effectively a, a radiator where that hot compressed air goes through. The radiator is then exposed to the cool ambient air and the temperature of that intake charge drops back down. So if you can get that intake temperature down to 24 Celsius 
or 75.2 Fahrenheit, you'll be knocking on the door of the factory power figures of that engine at around about 199.7 horsepower. And you'll be doing your quarter mile time in just under 16 seconds at 15.95 seconds. So dropping further to 12 degrees, that's quite a big drop now. That's 53.62 Fahrenheit. Your power will be up slightly at 204 horsepower and that will shave about a tenth off the quarter mile time at 15.85 seconds. Another two degree Celsius temperature drop or or 50.20 Fahrenheit would take the power up a little notch further. But you start to see that the scale is minuscule now. You start making fairly big drops to the temperature and you're not seeing massive gains in the power. So there certainly is an optimum setup. So at that sort of level, you'll be running 15.83 second quarter miles. So the takeaway from this really is to make sure the intake is as cool as possible. The problem you have with your average intercooler is it will start to warm up. It will start start to become less and less effective at cooling that intake charge down. So we would call that heat soak and that's a problem that can be avoided to some extent by having a larger or a better designed intercooler. But putting a big intercooler on, there's not always a performance advantage to having a large intercooler. There is an optimum size and that optimum size is determined by the typical type of use your car gets put to and the power band that your car engine is outputting. A lot of thought needs to go into changing the intercooler size and getting an intercooler that's of dimensions that are appropriate to your specific application and needs. But I have seen people put in ice blocks on the intake area just to further take that temperature down, just to shave a little bit more time off the intake. In the real world, does this make much of a difference? Well, we have to be honest, it doesn't make that much difference. The difference between 204 horsepower and 190 horsepower, you're not generally going to notice in everyday driving. On the track, you may see slightly better times. Those quarter mile times will be slightly reduced. But again, you're even within the margins of error of your gear changes and the driver's input into producing that time. But it's taught us the importance of intercoolers and it has explained why the car feels that little bit more lively on those cold, frosty mornings. But just remember that on those warm, sunny afternoons where the ambient temperature is quite high, you are getting better fuel economy. So if you've got long journeys to make, you can make a little bit of saving on your fuel just by opting to do that in the hottest part of the day. Although if you turn your air conditioning on, you're going to kind of undo the advantages of that. But I'll leave that decision with you. Let me know in the comments if you've noticed much of a difference in your car at different times of the day and whether you feel the intake temperature makes that much of a difference to you. I know we're all going to have different experiences. Those with turbocharged engines are going to be completely different with those with large capacity naturally aspirated engines and the smaller capacity naturally aspirated engines are also going to have different experiences too. So please fire up those comments. We would love you to stay tuned. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And thank you so much for watching. If you could just boot that like button, that would really help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting if you want to get the best performance out of your engine.